Welcome to episode 215 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're talking about this very simple principle. It goes something like this. You reap what you sow. So. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Okay, this weekend, this principle, uh, I know I've talked about it before, but this weekend specifically, it just slapped me in the face, no pun intended, Will Smith, Chris Rock, whatever. It slapped me in the face because I couldn't believe like how clearly it became evident to me. And it's something that I already knew. I always think about like, hey, we don't need more, um, more insights into our life. We really don't. The internet's full of them, Instagram's full of them. Everyone wants to tell you the insights. I'm a part of that noise. Right? We don't need more insights. Actually, just what we need is more remembrance and adherence and consistency to the insights that we already have. So you reap what you sow is something that I've known for a really long time. I've thought about, I've talked about for a really long time, but I realized this weekend how much I don't actually adhere to it or pay attention to it. This is one of those principles um, that I love so much because it is applicable in just about every area of life, right? Relationships and emotions and finance and business and nature. You reap what you sow. And it basically, the pre premise is this. We are in a perpetual state in our lives of reaping and sowing, reaping and sowing. And one of the issues that comes up is when that we start to get frustrated with our situation and we don't connect the dots that actually we are reaping something that we put in the ground a long time ago. And not only just put it in the ground, but we cultivated it and we watered it and we nurtured it. And now when it sprouts up out of the ground, we can't be like, hey, what are you doing here? But that's what I do all the time. And the flip side of that is that I can't expect to just change something right, to just start sowing something new in the ground, a new thought, idea, mentality, routine, relationship. I can't expect to put that in the ground and then immediately be like, okay, where's all the rewards from this thing, right? I just put it in the ground. It would be ridiculous to look at a corn stalk that comes out of the ground, right? You've seen corn stalks. We have a lot of them in upstate New York. They get taller than me. And you're looking at that and looking at it and be like, why, why is this not a, a tomato? Why is this not a tomato plant? I wanted tomatoes and I have corn. It's even more ridiculous if I'm the one that planted the corn. And we remember that time where you put the corn in the ground and you buried it and you, you like let it do the thing. And now there's a corn stalk. Yet here I am yelling at it saying like, hey, what, why aren't you a tomato? I wanted tomatoes. Your corn, it's your fault. It's your problem. No, it's my fault. It's my problem. So that's, that's an issue where it's like, hey, I planted that. That's what grew. I can't be surprised by that. And I can't treat it like it, it's that plant's fault. You know, conversely, so that's like something that, you know, I had to reap because I sowed it. Flip side is sometimes we reap things because we let something grow and ignored it. We also didn't cultivate it. You know, there are these big weeds that grow behind my house. Um, I have like a bank and then there's a view. And so these weeds are like weed trees. I don't even know what they're called, but they grow so fast. Schumach? Schumachs? Maybe? Maybe that's what it is. But either way, they grow really fast. So like one year, they'll come up and they'll just be like these little sprouts and they'll get like to be, you know, two or three feet high and not very thick. You can probably still get them down with like a really aggressive weed whacker. But if you let them go one more year, what happens is they become like seven feet tall and the trunk is no longer a little sprout, but now it's like good two to three inches across. And now you need a saw to cut them down. And last year, I ignored them the year before. And so now they're blocking the view and they're a real big pain to cut down, right? They take a lot of work. I have to get on the bank. I have to get a saw out and now I have to haul this stuff somewhere. It's a mess. But I can't look at those seven foot Schumach trees and be like, hey, what the heck? Why are these things here? No, I neglected to tend to them when they were just little issues. And instead that neglect turned to a lot of work and a lot of annoyance and a lot of frustration. So really two angles to this. One angle is I planted this corn in the ground. It grew to be corn. I can't yell at it for being corn. The other angle is I neglected to tend to this thing. And so I, I let it grow. And in turn, now I have to deal with the result of that because I neglected it. So this principle of what you reap, you will sow is the case in all of our lives. 
in our relationships. You have something going on in your relationship, guess what? It doesn't have to do with that one moment. Have you ever had a situation in a relationship where like, wow, that that seemed intense, right? I mean, everyone's talking about the Will Smith smacking, slapping Chris Rock, the Academy Awards, right? I don't know if it's real or, or if it's fake. I mean, they're actors, they act. Who, who knows? Who knows and who cares if it's fake or not? But the reality is, if somebody goes off like that, guess what? It's not just that one thing, right? It is many things before that. It happens all the times in relationships. And here's another thing about that. Our perpetual state of life is reaping and sowing. Right now, we are e reaping what we've sowed and cultivated in the past, but we also, the good news is we have the opportunity to sow new things into the ground. But what we can't do is expect that new thing that we sow in the ground to make a difference immediately, right? Like, I have not picked up my laundry off the floor for the last 10 years of our relationship, <laughs> right? And so I do it one time and expect you to believe that I'm different and I've changed. No, you have to. So, I mean, it's a really superficial example, but I use that because I think in relationship and in life, a lot of us do those things, right? I've changed. Can't you see I changed? I just did this thing a different way. Now, I, I need to change. Absolutely not right? You need to sow consistency so that you can cultivate trust. So then you can re-reap the war rewards of the things that trust brings you. So that is my hope in sharing it today is that this perspective on reaping and sowing slapped me in the face over the weekend. I knew it was true. I need to remind myself, right? Hopefully me reminding you can give you a little more perspective in some of the things that are happening in your life today, whether they are difficult things that you're reaping, good things that you are reaping, right? Keep cultivating those things and also an encouragement for you to remember that you are always, always sowing. You are always planting every day, every decision, every relationship, every word, right? You are sowing something into the ground and cultivating something. So sow good seed today. It's good to talk to you. I hope that this is a good week of reap again sowing for all of us. I will see you next week. We came to fight.